Wanted to make another absurdity of the world video. I haven't made one of these in quite some time. And I, I thought the, uh, the last two were a couple years ago. Because there were so many absurd things, I just had to get it off my chest. Anyway, the first absurd thing was I'm at Walmart today. Just because it's on my way to the park where I like to hike. I, I try to split up my time. You know, I get one day for exercise, one day for working around the house. One day, you know, doing work on the computer, one day cleaning inside the house. You know, it's a balance to life. But anyway, I'd never seen so many people. The, the line to the customer service desk was a bow long. You know, if you got family or you got kids or whatever, do your shopping ahead of time. You know, time is a precious commodity. Oh my God, I couldn't believe it. And then I'm coming out and I make the turn onto the road to come to the park. And there's a phone sitting right in the middle of the road i assume they were shopping at walmart probably set it on top of the car luckily they were real fortunate that i found it because uh, i just well i, I got it you know because it wasn't hadn't been run over by a tire nobody had hit it and i just turned it in at the customer service desk assuming that they're going to be smart enough to figure out where they lost their phone and then go back to walmart to get their phone the next absurd thing that i wanted to get to was the uh the Hootie Rebels, you know, bring it on, baby. Who would have ever thought that Yemen would go up against the United States? You know, that is the most absurd thing when you, you know, in hindsight, I would have said that that's completely absurd. But I, they're saying bring it on. Now you gotta remember, those are tough fighters. You know, we've been bombing them, I wanna say since 2014, yeah, 2014 maybe, you know, Saudi Arabia has. And guess who stayed out of the conflict this time? Because Yemen, you know, they hit, they hit a, uh, I think it was a Saudi refinery with a missile, and then they also hit some of their oil infrastructure. So Saudi doesn't want to take that chance again. So the UAE, Saudi Arabia, pretty much everybody's staying out of it. The only people over there are the United States. Now, the absurd thing is, we could end the whole conflict just by telling Israel to cease fire, pull out of Gaza, and negotiate for peace. That would end everything. Right there, just be done with it. No, nah, no, nah, the yes, United States uh, got to beat our chest. We got to go in there and fight the Yemi, Yemeni fighters, you know. I'm not even going to call them rebels. So, I just, stupid. It's just stupid. The other thing that gets me, we're going to cut to a clip. Because I'm getting tired of people around me that are all for Israel. Oh yeah, yeah. Israel needs to kill all the Palestinians. Kill them all. Kill them all, you know. And uh, so right now, absurd, I think 40% of the buildings in Gaza have been leveled. They're nothing but rubble at this point. Israeli tanks are just pulling up the homes. Imagine if some somebody, the United States sent a tank to your home, they pull up and just shoot around right into your house. That's exactly what's happening in Gaza. And the Christians, you know, they think they're for the Jews. They're, they're, it's the Zionists that you got to worry about. They're the ones in charge of Israel. And their doctrine is mow the grass. That means kill all the Palestinians. So they're trying to kill them all. I don't even know. 6,000 bombs they've dropped. And people are all for this? People are for just the extermination? The genocide of all the Palestinians? If you're not for that, you're not a Christian. You're not somebody that I want to be around. I can tell you that right now. So that, that whole thing is absurd. And then it looks like Israel may want to take on Hezbollah. I guess they're counting on the fact that the United States is going to come swooping in and, uh, with airplanes and, and help them bomb Hezbollah. Hezbollah doesn't care. Hezbollah's going to level Israel if they go that route. That's another absurd thing. My God, I, we can just go around the horn. Uh, you know, what do we... What are we at? Uh, I think the last count I heard was 16,000 women and children are dead. Oh, they're just Palestinians.
Just like in World War II, they're just Jews. They're subhuman. They're not human. They're, all the Palestinians need to die. That's what Christians all say. All the Palestinians need to die. Yeah, yeah, keep, Israel, keep bombing them. Keep bombing them. I think that uh, right now we're at about, what, 2,000 Hamas soldiers out of 38,000 that the Israelis have actually rounded up. And the Israeli casualties, I hear, are pretty high. Casualty, not deaths. Uh, have, from the deaths, I think it's only in the hundreds. Casualties would be in the thousands. So the, the the next absurd thing was remember when everybody was posting all those Ukraine flags on their Twitter or their X accounts and you know we're all for Ukraine, we're all for Ukraine. What about our southern border? That's the most absurd thing that exists today. And the Democrats are all for it. They want this country invaded. I mean, good God, we got 20 million people that have come into the United States. We don't know most of them young men and buff. You know, how many of them are terrorist groups? And the Democrats are all for it? It's just absurd. You know, I'm just going to the southern border because I'm talking about Ukraine. We've got to defend Ukraine's borders. What's Ukraine got to do with the United States? I, I, I don't know. And then, you know, when you're all for, you know, the United States fighting Russia in, with Ukrainian blood, you know, the proxy war over there, get your facts straight. Learn a little bit about history. Go back to when Reagan met with Gorbachev. Go all the way back. And Reagan made a promise to the Russians, we won't expand NATO, no way, no how. Uh, that's our promise. We've got some, got some arms control deals. Everything was happy between Russia and the United States. Of course, the Soviet Union fell. You know, we were the sole superpower in the world. But no, now we're going we're gonna to beat our chest. We're going to go around the world. We're going to bomb Iraq. We're going to bomb Iran. We're going to bomb Libya. We're going to bomb Bosnia. Oh, yeah, let's bomb the whole fucking world, you stupid fools. Oh, my God, but I'm just going back on the history of Ukraine. So all these people beating their chest saying, yeah, United States, go over there and beat up on Russia. Beat up on Russia with the Ukrainian blood. So uh, I know those people are totally ignorant. You know, you, you got to look at the history. So what did NATO do? NATO expanded. First, the Baltic. Well, first it was the eastern nations, you know, the Czechoslovakia, you know, brought them into NATO, NATO and, you know, uh, East Germany, and, you know, just kept expanding NATO. Then it became the Baltic states. Then it became Finland. Then it became Sweden. Do you think that if we, if Russia was knocking on our door over here by annexing uh, Mexico into a Warsaw Pact and annexing Canada into a Warsaw Pact, that we're just going to sit idly by? Well, we probably would under Democrats. I mean, they, they're they dumber than a bag of stones. But anyway, I mean, you think we're just going to sit idly by and watch that happen? And then, you know, they don't even know that back in 2014, Victoria Newland went to, hey, good to see you again, went to uh, Ukraine, installed a puppet. It wasn't Zelensky at that time. I can't remember the name of the leader and overthrew the government in Ukraine to get a Western friendly government in place. Okay, now, what do you think Russia was looking at? They're going, this is not good. And so then what provoked the war? A lot of people, most Americans that were flying those Ukrainian flags don't even know what provoked the war. Well, the first thing was we armed Ukraine to the teeth. So Russia, let's say they're arming Mexico to the teeth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a great thing. Well, we want to, especially, we got an unfriendly government in Mexico. And then we're looking at this and we're going, damn, how big is that army? I mean, good Lord. And they just kept pumping weapons in, pumping weapons in, pumping weapons in. And of course, Ukraine had all the old Soviet equipment that was left behind. So you're looking at this on your border and thinking, all right, you know, we better do something about this. So then to provoke the war, they said, well, we're going to bring Ukraine into NATO. Okay, and Putin had already drawn the line long ago, back in 2014, when, you know, when they took Crimea. Because, you know, they, they knew that a Crimea is a Russian, you know, mostly Russian people live in Crimea anyway. A lot of people don't understand that. Crimea would never want to be back in Ukraine. And, and, and then the other thing is people don't even know how corrupt Ukraine is. I mean, they, they're dragging old men off the streets, putting a rifle in their hand and sending them to the front lines to die. I mean, what kind of nation does that? I, I'm on my box, but I mean, it, so if you're going to be for something, at least understand the history behind it. And Putin basically just told him, he said, knit means knit. That means no means no. No more NATO expansion into Ukraine. No way, no how. 
and as a result Ukraine's gonna cease to exist as a nation and that's another absurd thing why don't we just make peace you fools as Colonel Douglas McGregor says I don't even understand why Ukraine's still fighting you know and dying I mean I could I guess they're killing Russians you know, that Lindsey Graham, you know, it's the best uh, best money we've ever spent in the United States because, you know, a dead Russian kid on the field of battle, even though it's probably 10 uh, Ukrainians that die for every dead Russian, uh, that's a good good way to spend American money. I think that maybe taking care of our homeless, uh, securing our border, maybe ending the fending to fentanyl crisis might be a little more important to the United States than what we're doing in Ukraine. Here's some more absurd things for you. We got a Supreme Court justice that doesn't know the difference between a man and a woman. <laughs> That's absurd. And she made it to the Supreme Court. She got verified by Congress, which means Congress is absurd. You know, I mean, that, to me, that would have disqualified. I mean, how can you serve on the highest court in the land? I mean, we're making a joke out of the United States. Holy shit. And then, of course, these... The pronouns. Let's talk about pronouns. You got to call me by your proper pronoun. Well, I've always said my pronoun is asshole. You can call me asshole anytime you want. You know, but uh, I just can't believe that the workplace is going on. If somebody, if I was president of a company and somebody came in and said, you got to call me he, she, or it, or whatever, or they, I'd say, get the fuck out of the door. <laughs> if that's something you're going to worry about, Go home, man. I mean, I don't want you as an employee. Oh, my God. I can't believe that. Then we get to blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. That was the most absurd thing I've ever heard of. And the really, the really absurd thing is uh, Germany went along with it. Schultz said, yeah, U.S., go ahead and blow up our pipeline. Well, how about just turning the valve off? I mean, if you're so worried about Russian gas, then just turn the valve off. And say okay we're not going to use russian gas and then maybe after the war if you get on better relations and of course the environmental disaster that that caused i mean you know the democrat party the environmental party bullshit they're, they're the worst for the environment that i've ever seen you know here in florida we have a republican governor he's just allocated 600 million dollars to clean up our waterways now that's environmentalism not blowing up the north stream pipeline but the absurd thing there was that germany went along with it I just, I can't believe, what's wrong with just turning the valve off? Is it, am, am I missing something here? Leave a comment below. And what triggered this one was I met, when I was turning in that cell phone at Walmart, a car drove past, and the guy had a big old Biden flag strapped to the side of his car, some makeshift uh, strapped one there. And I'm thinking, hey, I'm here in Central Florida, this is Trump country. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, you want to invite somebody to slit your tires. I mean, that's a good way to do it. Now, I don't think, I hope to God, no Trump vote, you know, voters would do something like that. And that's, a, that's the reason I don't have a Trump sticker on my car. I wanted to get one of them bobbleheads, but I, wouldn't fig I couldn't figure out how you would uh, attach that to your dashboard so that uh, the Trump bobblehead, the Trump Trumpinator, the Trumpinator, I've seen it on uh, the Turley Talks. I think it looks pretty cool, but I, I, I couldn't figure out how I would put it on my dash. Nor, you know, when you do something like that, you trigger a leftist. You know, you might come out to having your car keyed or whatever. And I got a nice car. I don't, I don't want to even take that risk. And I figure just uh, making these videos and putting them up and uh, being a Trump supporter. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of Our Country, Our Choice. I encourage you to look at that. Our Country, Our Choice at uh, dot com. Uh, go out there and uh, if you want to join the cause. That's uh, being led by uh, Colonel Douglas McGregor. Very smart man. So, but the, the other thing that's absurd is having, I, because the Biden flag, having a meat puppet for a president. Do you think that the world's looking at the United States going, what the hell? Who in the hell would vote in Joe Biden? <laughs> I mean, the guy can't even walk. He's falling down. He, he's falling up, up, going upstairs. He can't speak. I mean, you know. How in the world does that represent, I mean, if that's a representative of, of the United States, and then, of course, we got Lincoln Blinken, you know, that idiot. I mean, everybody in the whole Biden administration is dumber than the bag of stones. So the whole world's looking at the United States thinking, this is the dumbest nation we've ever seen in our lifetime. And, and, and then to have, I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of um, questionable activity that took place in the 2020 election. Let's put it that way. 
but uh, still a lot of people voted for Biden. Why would you do that after four great years under Trump? You had the best economy in the world. I mean, gas was dirt cheap. It was below $2 a gallon. And everybody still voted to get Trump out. Why? Because I guess the, you know, they just listened to the mainstream media because they, they were, you know, Trump, and a lot of people still believe Trump is a Russian asset, even though it's been disproven by a hundredfold. That was a conspiracy by, set up by Hillary Clinton. I mean, it's the absurdity of the world. You talk to one of these leftist lunatics, they still think, oh yeah, Trump's here and he's from Russia. Well, even if he was, I mean, Putin, I, you know, a lot of people hate Putin. I don't know why they hate him. Russians love him. To me, I wish he was our president. I, I, I think, you know, he's, he's sharp as a tack, did a four hour question and answer conference. I mean, can you imagine Biden sitting down for four hours and answering you know, pointed questions, tough questions, not just, you know, Mr. Biden, how, how do you tie your shoes in the morning? Can you please tell our public what what uh, what what it's like to tie your shoes in the morning? These are the questions that Biden gets. You know, Mr. Biden, do you do you still have to shave? Our listeners would like to know if you still have to shave. I mean, the absurdity of the world. Listen to the questions that the media asks him. They never ask him a tough question. Whereas when Trump was in there, they were asking him all kinds of tough questions, trying to pin him down. Okay, I thought of two more absurd things. You remember back when uh, John McCain, he said, I was a, I caught him on video and everybody was mad at him. He said, bomb, 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 Iran, bomb, 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 Iran. And uh, that was, uh, that was pretty much uh, not a good idea. <laughs> and a lot of people came out against it. What I'm hearing from everybody today is bomb Iran. Do you know what that would do to the world when they shut down the Straits of Hormuz? I mean, and they will, they'll definitely do it. And, and, and also, they, got, they could blow the hell out of Israel if you bomb Iran. Of course, you know, I, hopefully they wouldn't take it out on Israel. They'd just sink a couple of our, or maybe a couple of our ships. And the, uh, but the, all our ships now, from what I understand, are in the Red Sea. They're no longer over by, uh, by Iran. So maybe we're not going to bomb Iran. But that would be the most absurd thing to do. And why in the, another absurdity of the world? Why do we still have a base in Iraq? You know that they don't want them there it's just a matter of time until all those guys are dead and women I assume there's a lot of women on the base now that we we don't have many men in the military and uh, so and why are we in Syria well Trump said it out loud we're there to steal their oil so you're okay with stealing you know the United States can steal anything they want around the world and when you know where the where the where are the we're all in the top of the world. We're good to go. You know, that's okay because uh, we got the moral right to steal anything we want around the world. So what? what's the latest thing we're going to steal? The Russian funds. So they're saying they're going to steal the Russian funds. And I, I doubt it. They say, they say they're going to send it to Ukraine. Do you understand what that means? Do you think the whole world's not looking at that going like, hey, you know what? If they can steal Russia's money, What's going to make keep them from, you know, if we get on the bad side of the United States, what's going to keep them from stealing our money? So, de-dollarization, I mean, they're putting it on steroids. You know, I thought it would take to like 2030 before the whole world got away from the dollar. No, I think that we're going to see it within the next year or two, maybe even less. And when the whole world doesn't want U.S. dollars, all those dollars come flooding back to the United States. Who's going to buy the treasuries? If China, well, China's not buying them no more. In fact, they've sold off a bunch of the treasuries. So China's not financing our debt. You realize we've been living off of the world financing the United States debt for quite some time. We've had that privilege because we have the reserve currency. When we're no longer the reserve currency, and I saw that the debt clock just crossed 34 trillion. That's an absurd. That's absurd. I mean, are people looking at this and preparing? I mean, I, t I talk to people and I said, "Were you buying gold and silver?" No, no, I don't. You know, I, that's just a rock. It sits in a closet. You know, I don't want any gold and silver. Absurd! You got to have something that's going to hold its value. What do you think is going to happen to the dollar? I mean, just look at it with some common sense, people. And when the dollar goes, what's going to happen to Social Security or Medicare? Or all these government-funded uh, funds. You know, what are you going to do? Wipe your butt? Wipe your ass with a dollar bill? Because that's all it's going to be is toilet paper. And if people can't see that, I don't get it, man. Maybe somebody explain it to me. Leave a comment below. So getting back to the absurdity of bombing Iran, one, one other thing, you know, and 
these are things you can reason out on your own. You don't have to be a genius to figure these things out. The logistics. Iran's on the other side of the world. So is Russia. So is China. How in the hell are we going to fight a war? Well, against all three. You know, Russia, China, maybe North Korea. You know, we're going to fight the whole damn world. But how's the logistics? I mean, World War II, how many troops did we lose trying to get them across the Atlantic Ocean by with German subs sinking our, our troop carriers? So how are you going to get all your U.S. troops over there? Oh, yeah, we got we got a couple of bases over there. Well, yeah, we got maybe 30,000 troops in South Korea. I imagine they would be, uh, they'd all be dead if North Korea brought up all their artillery and launched all their missiles. That base would be gone. So there's 30,000 that is not going to do no damn good. Uh, and, of course, I, I don't even know, what is it, a million men under arms in North Korea? So what's 30,000 going to do against a million when they come across the, the DMZ? I'm just giving you one example. Or if we've got, a, we're moving troops into uh, Poland, and then Poland's going to go into Russia. Well, from what I hear, all the men <laughs> in Poland are saying, hell no, we ain't going into Russia to fight the Russians. You can, you can call us up, you can mobilize us, you can throw us in jail. We are not going in to fight the Russians. So that would be, mean uh, wait, maybe 5,000 U.S. troops are going to go into, uh, into Ukraine and help them out. I don't think so. And then how are you going to get the logistics to, to uh, keep supplying them with arms and munitions? You got Israel, you know, we've given Israel probably a huge amount of our 2,000 pound bombs to kill Palestinians. So I imagine our stockpiles are quite low from giving Israel a lot of our ammunition. And of course, we've given tons and tons of ammunition to Ukraine. You know, you think, that, oh yeah, well this brings on more jobs because now we need to manufacture more ammunition. Well, how fast do you think we can turn it out? We're a just-in-time manufacturing nation. We didn't keep all the infrastructure from World War II, you know, and say, okay, let's just maintain it, keep it on the side, upgrade it from time to time, and if we ever need it, it'll be there. No, now that stuff's gone. So, we're, And then how are you going to get it across the sea to get it into the hands of the Marines if you land them. And where are you going to land them in the Middle East? There's not a country over there that's friendly to the United States. So how are you going to get them unless they're going to assault on the shore of Iran? Iran's got a million people under arms. You think that a, a, a assault force of 5,000 Marines are going to be able to land on the shore of Iran? And, if, you know, bombing them from the air ain't going to do no damn good except to shut off the oil to the world. You think the price of gas is high now. You bomb Iran and see what happens. The absurdity of the world. Two more absurd things, because I hear this all the time, is uh, how great it is that we're fighting the Russians with a whole bunch of dead Ukrainians. Well, I keep hearing the number 500,000. I think uh, I think we're at at least a million, because I see the numbers every day. It's usually about two to 500 dead Ukrainians a day, and that's been going on, well, since the counteroffensive, and well before that. But I can't believe, uh, what kind of sick mind do you have to have to want a million people dead? Not counting the Russians. I mean, you know, you figure 10 to 1 maybe. So if you got a million dead Ukrainians, you might have a, a thousand, a hundred thousand dead Russians, you know. Well, who on earth wants that? I mean, we could have had peace back in, uh, I want to say, what was it, March or April of 2022. And instead, we torpedoed and told the Ukrainians, no, nah, man, we got your back. Go take on the Russians. Well, there's no way we're going to take on the Russians. Russians have won every single... Go study your history just a little bit. They defeated Napoleon. They defeated Hitler. I mean, they've been invaded more times in the history of the world than, than I can count on both my hands. So how many times has the United States been invaded? Not, at, not that I know of. I mean, we've had plenty of wars. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, how many times have we been invaded? You think Russia's not ready to fight a war on their own continent? where they've got all the logistics and everything? Who the hell thought that was a good idea? The other one that gets me is what kind of sick bastard would want all the Ukrainian, all the Palestinians dead? I mean, ever look at yourself in the mirror? You know, think of, think of New York City. Let's just take New York City as an example. Imagine that 40% of New York City is just rubble right now. And that all the people that were in those buildings and everything, all the women and children mostly, are dead.
And you're for that? What kind of sick bastard are you, huh? I mean, and, and, and they say 20,000. I bet it's probably 30,000 by now. That doesn't count all the people that are dying from, from uh, you know, injuries because they, they blew up the hospitals. Who the hell blows up a hospital? And you're for that? My God, I don't know, man. It's a sick, sick world that we live in. Two more absurd things. Just past the woman. You ever notice how the dog looks like its owner? <laughs> I mean, it's, I swear every time I look at somebody on YouTube and they got their dog in the picture, I'm thinking, man, that dog looks an awful lot like their owner. I, maybe it's just uh, me being crazy. Tell me. All right, but January 6th, I wanted to talk about that for two seconds. I mean, even at the time, I knew it was a setup. You don't allow people into the Capitol building. You know, there's no way, no how that happens unless it's a planned event. I mean, my God. And then to call it an insurrection, an insurrection, and nobody had a gun. <laughs> what kind of insurrection was that? I mean, you know, there'd be a lot of dead Capitol Police officers if it was an insurrection. I can guarantee you that. So for even people to even think that, it, it defies common sense, doesn't it? And then we all know that Trump offered the National Guard to Nancy Pelosi and the, the mayor of D.C., and they refused it. Why would you refuse added help to secure the area when you know that there's going to be thousands of people coming to Washington, D.C. to protest. Well, you, you would only do that if it's a setup. You know, that, that just use your common sense. And now we've got all the January 6th footage, which I bet all the lefties and the liberal lunatics, they won't even look at that footage because it's an insurrection. We don't want to see the people walking around in the Capitol building between the ropes. You know, the shaman, he's out now. Uh, I'm glad he's out of prison. I mean... And then, of course, that whole committee with Liz Cheney, thank God she's gone. That woman's dumber than a bag of stones. And I, whatever the king, what was the crying guy? Can't remember. The only two Republicans, if you, well, there weren't Republicans. Those were Democrats on the committee. And then to, to waste all that taxpayer money for no damn reason when you knew that there was a setup from the very beginning. Even Nancy Pelosi had a film crew there. Why would you have a film crew there if you didn't plan on something? Then we find out the FBI agents are all uh, were embedded in the crowd stirring things up and hit them and then they hit them with flashbangs what do you think people are going to do when they get hit with flashbangs for no damn reason you know holy shit so much has come out about that and people still believe it was an insurrection how stupid can you be all right let's finish the video off right here another absurd thing just saw a guy with blue hair <laughs> you know my dad he he would have beat my ass if I ever came home with blue hair. In fact, he was so strict, he said, Son, if you ever put an earring in your ear, or pierce your lip, or well, back then they weren't piercing their lips or anything like that, or get a tattoo, don't bother coming back to the house. You're not walking through my front door. <laughs> so, what happened to those days? I don't know, man. Blue hair. Holy shit. But I always try to end with a little bit of advice to you. Okay, I ordered windows, and I'll name them out from a new by Anderson in July of 2022. The project will not be finished, hopefully. Well, hopefully it will be finished on July 29th. And even then, I still have to have an inspector come in and inspect the job because he's failed them twice now. That's why the job keeps taking so long. I mean, so my piece of advice is, if you got any improvements you gotta make, get it done before everything goes to shit. You know, I mean, you know the dollar's going to crash. You know the stock market's going to crash. You know the real estate market's going to crash. You know, the commercial real estate now is a huge problem. So anything you got to get done, start looking around. Replace that hot water heater. Replace that washer and dryer if they're really old. Replace that dishwasher. Don't wait, man, because it's going to be awful hard to get them things done when the shit hits the fan. Peace out and stay free. All right, I got another absurd thing for you. There's the moon. Pretty cool. Look at this. Wow. Just try to pan it slow. I'm going to walk down in here a ways. So the Griswolds are still alive and well. Christmas vacation. What do you think? Is the cat still alive? <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. I guess the neighbors got in on it. Where do they store all of this? I'm going to get down here and get this other house. Well, uh, well, let's just keep going. Maybe I'll make a separate video out of this. Look at that. That is beautiful. Pretty cool. 
Let's, uh, let me just stop. Get that on the video. And then we got right down here. Just, howdy. Man, you guys got quite a setup here. This is awesome. Check this out. Beautiful. Got a car behind me, I better get moving. <laughs> 